Welcome into a Sunday sermon. And uh, as you may mean, I know every Sunday I do a, um, a reading from the uh, classic tome from Mr. Uh, Neely Fuller Jr. It's called the United Independent Comp Compensatory Code System Concept, right? It's a compensatory counter-racist code by Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. This is a 2016 edition. It's a, it's a revised and expanded edition of the uh, 1984 edition, uh, which is just like a bigger format for that one, you know. They, they still sell it in this little smaller format, but um, not the original one back in South Africa. Anyway, this is a, a, a textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for the victims of racism, which is defined as white supremacy. In other words, if you're practicing racism, you're practicing white supremacy. White supremacy is racism. You can't, you know, you can just say what you what whatever you are. If you're practicing it, you have that mentality, then you're being racist. Simple as that. Be whatever color you are. But that's my interpretation. Anyway, so usually, uh, I actually uh, look ahead of time of what I'm what I'm going to read from from uh, Mr. Lee Fuller Jr. Unlike every morning, I actually uh, read from the uh, from the Gullah. From the Gullah Bible, but that I just pick anything like that. But that's more Christian. This is for uh, this is what uh, what we call well, it's Miss Neely Full Junior calls, and I adopted it from the Deist kind of evolved from the Deist to eclectic pluralism. That's what we practice here. <laughs> ah, okay. So um, this time I'm I'm doing the area of uh, in politics, uh, people relations. Area six now is, is, is people relations, relations, which is politics. And um, just in case you uh, are need to know this, there are basically uh, nine areas that Mr. Nelly, Nelly, nine areas of human um, awareness, human, uh, human humans <laughs> that they have um, in the source of uh, well, economics, uh, education, entertainment, uh, labor, law. Uh, politics is the area you're on right now. Uh, religion is the seventh area. Uh, sex is the eighth area, and which is a very powerful area, by the way. And uh, war, counter war is the ninth area activity. So we're on area uh, six, which is the uh, politics. And I'm um, under the the black leader sex, the black leaders section, uh, on page two hundred. But I'm not reading that there. I'm going to read start from page uh, bottom of page two hundred one. According to compensatory counter-racist logic, the basic qualifications for a, quote, black leader, end quote, are as follows. Then he gives some some uh, some rules for being a, a black leader, right? And uh, oh, it's only three rules is good. Three is a good number. But uh, be better if I could read it, <laughs> which in the class has helped. Hey, what can I tell you, you know? The other book has a bigger font, the, the, the original 84, but this has a smaller font. Here we go. Um, one, a black leader must know and understand what white supremacy, which is racism, racism is, and how it works in all areas of activity, including economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, counter war. Uh, now remember, Miss Neely Fuller Jr. in the beginning of the book has thing. If you do not understand white supremacy, then he has in, bra in brackets racism. What it is and how it works. Everything else that you understand will only confuse you. And he wrote that in 1971. 1971 is a good year. Um, and so, so, so let's let us uh, continue our reading. Remember. Uh, number two, a black leader must not be subject to the white, to the system of white supremacy, either directly or indirectly in any area of activity. That's going to be difficult. A black leader's third point must be ready, willing, and able to protect all of his or her followers. That's the definition of a black leader. Wow. Well, I guess it's different than a non-white leader. Let's see what happens. No, leadership that results in justice as the balance between people is yet to be produced. Such leadership does not now 
exists any place in the new in the known universe. So we say, hey, this leadership we have is not happening. So there's a there's a there's a question he has here. Uh, what are the best and correct questions to ask a white person who says that he or she is or intends to be your leader, boss, super uh, supervisor, super advisor, or supervisor, president, king, queen, master, partner, friend, co-worker, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Answer, ask what are you going to do uh, to help me? What are you going to do to harm me? This is a leader can either help or harm, you know what I'm saying? Uh, question, what is the correct thing to say when participating in an exchange of views with people during a uh, uh, during which non-white people are being criticized for their incorrect behavior. Hmm, this is interesting. Answer say non-white people do what uh, their leaders, white supremacists, led them to do. Uh oh, now we're getting deep. The system of white supremacy is so efficient and so complete that as long as white supremacy exists, all non-white people are at all times either acting because of existence or reacting because of its existence. In other words, existence of white supremacy controls everything. If you think you're you're acting against it, you're you're reacting, but you know you're still in that in that hamster in that in that system. That's how I read it. It is the white supremacists, that's racist men, racist women, collectively. Who have the most power, either directly or indirectly, over what non-white people do or not do on a daily basis. It is therefore correct to blame all of the non-constructive behavior of non-white people on the incorrect goals, intentions, behavior, and leadership of racist man, racist woman. This is interesting because right now you have this war in, uh, cri um, I say Crimea, but you know, up there, yeah, Crimea, Crimea up there, the Russians and the and the Ukrainians, same people. Um, <laughs> some people call them the the you have the the brown the brown eyed whites and the blue eyed whites. The Ukrainians being the blue eyed whites, and I guess the Russians being the brown eyed whites, having a fight, right? How does it affect you know black people? Is the question. Hmm. Interesting question. How does it affect black people? Because you're up there in the Ukraine fighting. And, you know, you have African nations say, hey, Russia, but, but you're, 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 you have the whole, not the whole, but you have certain countries in the in the Western world come, hey, you know, uh, you, you rally against this and we, you, you got pick pick your white person you're going to fight with. <laughs> fight with, with for, or whatever it is, right? And it's, it, to me, it's kind of interesting. This When you have a war, it brings out a whole lot of things. You know, um, I'll give you an example. You know, there's a lot of, um, there are some, Black people have platforms, you know, whether they're working for the mainstream media or some sort of outlet or whatever it is. And I've seen these black experts come out, Ukrainian experts come out. So I have friends in Ukraine and they want to stand with Ukraine trying to get black people to, to join the fight or whatever have you. You know, then they'll say things like, well, Ukraine, they, they, there's so much, uh, uh, they, they, uh, they, they're the, the wheat, bad, the bread basket of Europe or whatever, like that. Hey, ask them if they got the GMOs over there because put, I know one of the beasts was that the, the Ukrainians were using GMOs for their wheat, and they was afraid that the that whole patent that that bear has, you know, would would blow over. It used to be Monsanto, now it's bear, you know, out of St. Louis. It would blow over to Russia, and so they would contaminate their non-GMO because Russia's supposed to have non-GMO. Ukraine has it. That's one of the little kerfuffles, the little the little skirmishes that that's going on behind the scenes that nobody's talking about. But here's the thing. I laugh because, you know, you have to, like, say, say some black person that, that has friends in Ukraine or they study Ukrainian stuff or they're, they're on TV so much. Yes, and I have friends in Ukraine and, and blah, blah, blah. They're going like, wait a second, you're a black person. Don't you got friends, are you from the South? Or don't you got friends in the South that are in jail unjustly? You're going to fight the Ukrainians? How about, I tell you what, you want to help the Ukrainians? Here's my thing. If you want to help the Ukrainians, here's what you can do. Black people want to help the Ukrainians? Let's, you, you, we want to, we want to send, because, you know, you got white people that go in there and send as, as troops, you know what I mean? They're mercenaries. Maybe they're not mercenaries. They're just volunteers. So they just go there and get shot or whatever they're going to get, right? But think of if you're a black person recruiting for the Ukraine. Say, wait, here's the most effective way to recruit. Let's let all the black people, black men that are in jail, especially, that are in jail for, you know, trumped up, I'm not, I mean, I don't, you know, 
charges, you know, trumped up charges, whatever charges you want to call, right? Get them out so they can help the whole, you know, liberate U Ukraine. The, that many people, I don't mean in a fight for them. I just mean if we liberate America <laughs> for those white people, then those white people could somehow it works out. I think it works out that way. Anyway, so what I'm trying to say, so, so me, is a, it's a joke when black people, Africans, whoever they are, are trying to say, uh, you know, that they have some dog in this fight. Or maybe you do. But here's a question. I never had this question for a long time. Because uh, when you have, like, for instance, a lot, a lot of Nigerians uh, have come to the States in, in a, a while back. And so my question to them was, where are you coming from? But well, well, how do you have the means to come to the States? You know what I mean? Because Nigeria is very, you have, have very rich, very poor. So the people coming here, they have some sources. I'm talking about coming here now after the 90s. They have some resources. You know what I mean? If you send your kid to, to, to college, to, to medical school in Ukraine or Russia, you know what I mean? So you have the means to, to do that, you know. So you're leaving your country of origin to go someplace else to learn, and then you're going to take the country, are you bring that, that knowledge back to your country of origin, which supposedly has in more, less inferior knowledge than you're getting from these other places? I mean, is, is that the scheme? You know, because, again, let me stay with the Nigerians for a second. Uh, uh, Ken Sarah Wheel did this. There's an activist uh, that existed in the, uh, in in uh, the, the, the 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 Delta, you know, Nigerian uh, Delta, where the oil come from, and he was fighting Shell Oil Company, and they killed him, right? Well, you know, interestingly enough, there's a lot of I asked a lot of people when that was happening. What were were you defending Ken? Were you defending your your the oil fields or your thing against Shell and all these other big things? You wasn't. Okay, well, what what, what was happening then? I don't I don't understand. So you was running to the United States, you know, to take some advantages of some some stuff that the 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 black Americans created, right? And take advantage of that. Meanwhile, you're paying you're paying the United States and, and Shell and all the rest of the people money to do what? To go and uh uh uh, uh, uh what what do you say? To go why is my why is my phone ring? That's crazy. My phone is to ring. Oh, Sorry about that. Didn't know I had this phone on. Now it's off. It's my other phone. I should look up Ken Sarah Weaver we on this phone. So you see. So you see what it's like. But the point is, a lot of people come to the states when the states bomb their countries. You know, like say uh, Guatemala, whatever have you. They're running up here instead of fighting. <laughs> you got you to fight for your country, you know, because we don't afford to get where we were. And then you come here and jumping on us and, and you, you say, oh, it gets kind of crazy. And I, I'm going to say, I'm going like, wait a second. This is like, a, how, how we have, how, how would you say it? This is like you, you come here to, to the belly of the beast to do what? Well, to support the belly, to support the beast that's just killing your country people? Like with this whole thing with Ukraine, we're gonna have a whole lot of Ukrainians coming here and giving them money when the fight is over. I get sort of confused, you know. But then again, that's the, I guess that's the whole thing you're supposed to be looking for—a little conf confusion, I suppose. Let me look up Ken for a second and see what's happening. Ken, W. Okay, I have to look that up later. So here is Ken Sarah Weaver, Nigerian activist. Uh, Nigerian right here. He has him as a as a writer, but for me, he's like a you know a, a playwright uh, into TV or into the media, whatever have you. Um. And so when when he's doing his here's what Ken looks like. The picture that they usually show of him like that, like that. I don't know if you can see it. That's what he looks like. Ken. Extraordinary cat. Has stood up for his rights. Whew. The rights of his people, where others ran away from their country to do what? I have no idea what they were trying to do. Anyway, so this is like a little, just a little something on a Sunday. We talk informally. And... I guess what I'm trying what I'm trying to say in this particular lecture or this 
sermon, this Sunday sermon, is that, hey, what is it? Are we freeing ourselves? That's 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 the point. And how how are we uh, how are we picking our leaders? You know, are we picking our leaders? How does where does leadership come from? These are the questions that 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 you have to ask when you have your your black leaders. You know, what does it mean to be a black leader? Good question. Questions for me, T from the Patterson Secretary of Transit, Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.